passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I want to finish up this series that we've been talking about, How's Your Love Life? And uh, I want to read through this passage of Scripture one more time, just where we get the full effect, just so that we know exactly uh, what uh, love looks like. And so I want to start with the uh, first verse. It says, If I speak in the tongues of man and of angels, but have not love, I'm only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. I'm just one of those that just makes a lot of noise. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have faith that can move mountains, but I, but I don't have love, it just means that I'm, I'm nothing, nothing at all. If I give all my possessions to the poor and surrender my body to the uh, flames, but have not love, I don't, I don't gain anything. So we, we're going to run through this passage, passage of Scripture from verse 4 on because we've heard it over and over and over again. It says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes. It always perseveres. And then it says, love never fails. And I, you get to that point where it says, love never fails. And it goes over in your mind again and again and again and again. Love never fails. I, I don't know. I think the Bible is true. I think that that you have to look at it and take it for its word. I think it was inspired. It was breathed by God. But when he, when, when Paul writes this and he says, love never fails, are you serious about that? Are you, I mean, really? Because I know a lot of times when people have, have stood before uh, a, a crowd of people and they've made these major, major commitments to one another be, just because of that four-letter word, love. Who gives this bride away? Her father and I. Do you? Yes, I do. Do you? Yes, I do. Do you have a ring? I do. Place it on her finger. I will. You know? Now you may kiss your bride. And all of a sudden, I mean, in that moment, in that time, something wells up in you as a man, and you're thinking, I've kissed her before. You know, I, I, we have done this. we practiced it many, many, many times. But in this moment of time, I'm, I'm fix, fixing to kiss not just, not just a friend, you know. I, I'm, I'm not going to kiss just this girl that I happen to ask out. I'm not, I'm not going to kiss... This is my wife that I'm fixing to kiss for the very, very first time. And it's just something about when, when your lips, you know, just touches her. It's like electricity that goes through your body, right? And you don't know. Should this be a long kiss? You know, and, 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 and is the crowd going to go, woo, you know? Or, or should it be like one of those short kisses, just like... But I don't, want to, I don't want her to think that I don't love her, you know. And so for most of us that got married, for most, I mean, there are some of you guys, you know, that are, the, you know, you're like a dipper, you know. You're just like, wow. But, but for most of us, you know, it's, it's we, we, we lean in, we pucker, we kiss for a moment of time, and then we release and think there's more to come, you know. And that's just how it, that's just how it, that's. That's love, isn't it? I mean, that is, that is love. And at that moment of time, we know that love never, ever, not one time has it ever, ever failed. Except when like 50% of all marriages end in divorce. You know, then, you know, maybe I should have kissed her longer. Or maybe I should have acted different. Maybe I should have read the scripture, you know, like, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you know, love is patient, love is kind. I love those things. I don't know what I'm doing in 
this marriage anymore, you know. And you just feel like love has totally failed you. Maybe when you are going through one of those weeks where, you know, it's just, it's not a good week. And we all do that. We all have those ups and downs as families and as couples, even with friends that we have. Um, not all the time are we looking like chapter 13. And so how in the world does Paul have the audacity to say that love, love never fails? Because it does. The, the minute you trust somebody, the minute that you lay your heart out, the minute that you... You put yourself out there, and you've tried, and, you, and you're going through the process, you're going through the motions, and you've made commitments. All of a sudden, it feels like the rug is just pulled out from underneath you, and all of a sudden, that's just not the woman, or that's just not the man, or we've been together for so long, but this isn't how I really had it all planned out. And it seems like love truly fails. But here's the problem with chapter 13. We're missing the point, because... Obviously, it's written, and obviously, this is what love looks like, and this is what love should be. But when it says, love never fails, it's not talking about us failing. It's talking about God. Because God's love never fails. I'm sorry today. I apologize today. Because there are going to be times that I'm going to disappoint you. There are going to be times that... I say something out of turn that I shouldn't have said, and I, I, I didn't mean to. It was just, it just came out. I don't know why it did, but I offended you, and all of a sudden you say, you know, that pastor didn't love me near as much as I thought he did. And I apologize because I, I want to love you with everything I've got. I want to be your pastor. I want to be your friend. I want to be that guy that is there for you through thick and through thin, but there's going to come a time where my love for you might falter or fail. But the best thing about it is, when we look at this scripture for really what it's worth, you cannot tell me today. You cannot, you cannot be here in this room and look me in the eye and tell me that God failed you. Because His love has never, ever failed. Look with me real quick to, to 1 John chapter 4. And we're going to read just a few verses there, starting with verse 7. It says, Dear friends, let us love one another. So we need to take those things in chapter 13, and we need to apply them to our lives for sure, because we've got to love uh, each other. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love then you've not met my God. If you can't find a way to express yourself with patience and kindness and all of those, those different things, you might not have experienced the God that I was singing about with you this morning. Because when he's, His love never fails, He never gives up. It never runs out on me. When I think that I've ran out on Him, and I'm running a hundred miles the other direction, thinking that I'm getting as far away from this stuff as I can, it just seems like all of a sudden I turn around, and in my darkest and deepest time, or my hardest place in life, there he is. Right there, in the middle of it all. And what becomes the hardest part all of a sudden, with this peace and this comfort, it just all becomes okay. Because the Word of God says that God is love. And this is how God shows His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that He might live through Him. i got a couple names for you this morning. Charles Albert Poland Jr. Does that ring a bell? History buffs are going, where was he at in time? What was the date? Teachers in the room are saying, I don't remember teaching about Charles Albert Poland Jr. That's not a name that just pops into my mind. How about 
about Don Hutchsprung. Anybody know that name this morning? Any dates in history come to mind? Mary Shalat. No? Not, not at all? Nobody in the room? Victoria Soto. Any names there? Yeah. See, Charles was the bus driver in Alabama just a few weeks ago that when the crazed gunman comes onto the bus to take a student with him to go and hold him hostage in a bunker, Charles, Albert Poland Jr., it said that he stood up and he protected his students on that bus the best that he could, and he gave his life for those students. Charles Poland Jr. The principal named Don at that at that Connecticut school and another another lady named Mary, which was a counselor, a psychologist there at the school, noted that they were they were facing the gunman themselves, trying to protect their students so that harm would not come to them. And they ultimately gave everything they had. They gave their family up. They gave their social life up. They gave their their church up. They gave the nice cars that they they gave it all up in a moment, in an instant of time, because they wanted to make sure that their students were okay. And so did Victoria Soto as she hid her students in her classroom and tried to put them all in a safe place. And yet, because she loved them so much, she sacrificed what she had so that some of those students might live. So if you turn, if you turn to John chapter 15 and verse 13, it says this, Greater love has no man. Greater love has no one than this, that he lays his life down for his friend. Now that's love. That's concern. That's compassion. And, and we question ourselves, what kind of love life do I have? Because if a situation would arise where I had to put myself in between those that I love and those that I care about in harm's way, do I have that kind of love in my life? That I stand up in the bus and I say, you can take my life, but you're not going to take the life of these children. That you love them so very much that you can sacrifice spending the time with your own so that other moms and other dads might be able to tuck their children in bed at night. And you start to, be, you start to think about it and you say, I really love my family. And I really, really care about them so very much. And in my Superman mentality, I say, absolutely. I stand up. And I fight with everything that I've got for those children. But then in my weakness, in my selfishness, I, I, can't, I can't answer how far my love will go until I was maybe put in that situation. But there is a man that came upon the scene, and his name was Jesus. And I want you to listen to this today, because this is not just another sermon, and you say, oh, we get to the part where we start talking about Jesus, and you're trying to convince... I'm telling you that love is so important today. And there was a man that came to earth, and he lived... A normal life. Sometimes we think, you know, things were set up for Jesus so it would be easy. And things were set up for him so that it wouldn't be exactly the same. I like to look into the Bible and find those points and those areas where I can see the human side of Jesus. That maybe he was a, a little boy that had 
went to the temple to be able to teach and to be able to talk to those that were much, much older than him. But he had so much wisdom when he was so young. And his mom and his dad, they were asking, where is he? Where is he at? I have told him, if, if we go through the mall, you stick right there. Don't make me pull out that little monkey suit thing that wraps around you with a, with a line. And all of a sudden, they walk into a place, and there he is with people around him. And he's talking about this God that he loves so very much. And then he begins to, to grow up and he spends more time with his parents and more time with people around him. It comes to a point where his ministry starts and his, and his mom says, you know, it's, it's time for you to do something. I want you to, I want you to do this. It's worth this ceremony. These two people are being married. And I want you to change that water into wine. And he does it. There's a time that he's with his disciples that he's chosen and he's picked out and he's invested everything that he has in, their, in his life into theirs. And they're praying in a garden. And those men that he cares for so much that he promised to pray with him as They've fallen asleep, and he's there all by himself. And he goes back, and he says, Can you not just pray with me for a little while? See, sometimes our love is with great intentions, but it, it just, for whatever reason, falls a little bit short. But Jesus, even in that instance, he continues to pour himself out over and over again. You know the story. You know what it comes down to where he sacrifices everything he has if this cup could pass from me if there's any other way God but for me to have to die on this earth that's what I choose today God if there's any other way but for one of us to step in the way harm's way and our lives be sacrificed let it happen that way but if not, then let me show up. If not, let me be the man of God. Let us be the people of God that would stand up in harm's way if necessary and show up. For God is love. And there had to be a way so that we could be able to worship Him so that we could experience Him, so that we could be reunited with God again. And His choice that day was His Son. You can't tell me today God doesn't love you. You cannot tell me today. You cannot convince me today. You cannot have words that come out of your mouth and, and, and say that God doesn't love you because He was willing to sacrifice everything. The thing that was so precious to Him he sacrificed it because he loved you. So he did. And he said, if this is the way that you're reconnected, if this is the way that you are able to take those people that have fallen short, and it will give them an eternal life that is wonderful with you, and God, I'll do it. How's your life left today? That's the question. Because I know God's. And it's amazing. God loves beyond, like John said, that we deserve. He goes much, much further than, than, he, than he probably should with us. He continues over and over and over to draw us close and to draw us near and hold us in His hand, and He protects us. His love, unlike mine and unlike yours, never, ever fails. How is your loving today? Because there's people that are around you today, and there's people in this community today, It 
they've been held hostage. They've been, they've been taken advantage of. They've been sought after. They've been, they, they, they are in, in big danger right now. And I think us as individuals, and a church, but us as individuals, we have to decide. How much do I love them? Because here's what happens. Jesus not only died for for those that loved him, but he died for his enemies too. For the people that were hurling insults, the people that had taken his robe and rolled dice to see who was going to take them home. How's your love life today? Are you in the place today where you can lay your life aside? Where you can say this morning, it's really not about me. It's about all of those people that I can protect. It's about all those people that I can tell the story of Christ to and them be saved. It's about all of those that I can can hide and, and put into shelter so the enemy cannot come in and abuse them and take them. And How's your love life today? I think I know. I think you'd be one that would stand up in the doorway of the bus and you would say you can't come in any further and if you do you'll have to go through me I have a wife and you will not get to her today you'll have to come through me first and I have a little boy And I'm telling you, Satan, if if you think for one second today that you're going to come in and you're going to try to to steer him off path, you got to come through me. So bring it on if you want to. But you will not touch my daughters. And you will not touch my family. And I'm telling you today... I love you so much, you will not touch the people in this church. When the enemy comes in like a flood and he tries to tell you that you are not patient and you are not kind and you are self-seeking and you are all those things that God is not going to fail you in those times. So stand up with, with boldness today. Stand up with everything you got. And you will defeat the one that comes against you. Because God has never, ever, ever failed you. And he will not ever, ever, ever fail you. Two things real quick. If you have come to this place this morning. And you don't know what God's love feels like. I want you to experience it today. We will stand in the gap and we will make up the hedge around you. We're here to protect you today. We are your family in Christ. We will not let you down. I promise we will try our best. And if we do at times, then I know there's a God that won't. And you'll have to forgive us. But I want you to try it today. In a few moments, I just want you to close your eyes. I want you to find a place that's all by yourself in your mind. I want you to begin to talk to him like he's a friend. And it is amazing. It is amazing the feeling that will come over your life. It's amazing that the weight that you have on your shoulders begins to lift off. All the troubles, all the all the bad things that you've been going through this week, whether it's with a spouse or your children or your job or whatever it is, it just begins to be okay. I was talking to a friend this week kind of about this subject and I I said 
You know, I say it quite a bit, but what is the worst that can happen to me? That it takes my life? That life is completely gone and it's over? That it's, it just doesn't work out anymore and I am finished? And then what do I have? I have God. I have a better life in heaven. I have a place where I can wake up every morning and see Jesus face to face. I have a place where I, I can assist my God in preparing for my family to come. <laughs> this world doesn't have anything on us. The stress, the overwhelming stuff, it doesn't have anything on us because I know 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I know how it ends. His love never, ever, ever fails. How is your love life today? Because if you don't know him before you leave this place today, you need to know him because your life completely and totally changes. How is your love life today? If you are not sharing, if you are not sharing, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 with other people and they do not know God is love because of you then in a few moments I want you to close your eyes and I want you to get in a place with God and I want you to let him show you how you can do that this week it could be by a smile it could be by a hug it could be a, a, a gentle pat on the shoulder it could be a prayer time with somebody. It could be a time where you lead somebody. To, I don't know what it'll be. I just know that if your love life is not in the position that it needs to be, then you're acting like something else that God never intended for you to be like. Love is the greatest. Love. Without it, we are nothing. Without showing it, 